goodness gracious hello it's good to see you all today is just going to be a classic favorites video and i apologize for the lighting it's very rainy today so it it's like extra moody in here. We'll get to some of those music favorites at the end of this video, but I wanna start with some beauty. We've got some miscellaneous other items in there as well. It's just your classic faves. I will try to leave links for everything down in the description. And I will also try to be clear because I think at least one of these, two of these actually will have affiliate links. So let's not make this intro too long. We'll just go ahead and get into it. I am kicking off with something that has just been really, really helping my skin as of late. Once, uh, you know, quarantine was kind of in full effect, I was really, really watching a lot of different skincare videos on YouTube from estheticians and all the sorts. And it seems that the cult following product, the must have product is the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. And Wow. I posted a picture to Instagram, which I will try to insert here, of the difference I saw in my skin right away. Basically, I was looking for a chemical exfoliant in my routine just because some I have tried in the past were, were like too drying for my skin, created a lot of unnecessary texture, which is kind of like the opposite of what you want an exfoliant to do. And I gave this one a go and so far so good. I tried to really ease into it. And I think honestly, that could be beneficial for any chemical exfoliant out there, using it one to two times a week just to get yourself adjusted. Paula's Choice as a brand, seems to be all about being effective, fragrance-free, cruelty-free, and everything is backed by scientific research. That's kind of their thing. So in terms of just like a skincare brand, I think this is amazing. Brands like Polish Choice have an excellent recycling program, and I'll get into some other products from other brands in this video that um, are also making strides in sustainability because I do think it is important to take care of your skin first and foremost and instead of slathering it with all these DIY concoctions that honestly can do more harm for your skin than good. Check out the channel, The Golden Prescription. Um, She's an esthetician in Los Angeles, and I've learned a lot from her recently, among other estheticians on YouTube, but she, I think, is really, really great at breaking down ingredients in different products, talking about why certain DIYs are harmful, and it's just been very eye-opening to me. But of course, do your own research, make your own decisions. That's just how I feel. Sorry, I won't ramble about all the products <laughs> quite that much, but that has just kind of been an all-encapsulating um, theme of the products that I've been purchasing as of late as I run out of other things, so yes. And the next product I'm going to talk about is the Everyday Face Cleanser from Alder New York. And Alder New York is a brand that I tried maybe like a year ago. I only tried their serum and it's really, really nice. I actually have repurchased it again recently um, because I now have like an affiliate link with this brand, so I'll leave this down below. But again, these days, just with what I've been consuming on YouTube as it relates to skincare and like Reddit and other random you know, places and whatever. Really, I should actually be doing my own scientific research, but there's just so many channels that have already done all of that for me. But anyway, fragrance-free products just are the best for your face. I know in the past I've mentioned brands like Lush and Coors, but those are actually two brands in particular that, you know, while they're making great strides in terms of cruelty-free offerings, they do put some synthetic fragrances in their products and one or two of those in a routine is okay, but when your whole routine consists of that, it can lead to irritation and other issues that you probably don't want. So I've been slowly trying to transition pretty much everything to fragrance-free that is going on my face and this cleanser has been amazing. The whole brand is just about being like vegan and unisex. And this cleanser in particular has AHA in it, has glycolic acid. So um, yes, again, another exfoliating product, gentle chemical exfoliating. And it also has sea botanicals to boost um, cell turnover, collagen production. Overall, like just such a simple but effective cleanser and I'm really, really enjoying it. So with skincare for the face, something that I've been really, really trying to emphasize as of late is skincare for the body. And what better brand is there than Necessaire for skincare for the body? That's like their whole ethos. Again, this is a brand that really, really emphasizes using 
only necessary, obviously, uh, <laughs> ingredients. It's actually a very sustainable brand, again, despite the fact that I was avoiding them for a while because they use plastic packaging, but in their shipping, everything that they ship in is all paper, FSC certified, sort of like just non-virgin forest materials. They're climate neutral. And on top of all of that, they make products that go on the body that have like similar ingredients to what you would put on your face. I've been trying a bunch of their products as of late that I've purchased all myself. I have a couple of their shower gels. I got this body exfoliator. This is the, yeah, that's literally what it's called. The body lotion. I did get my grubby little hands on the deodorant that was sold out for a while. So I'm trying that out right now too. Um, so yeah, I think I'll probably do like a body care routine in the future. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing that. But of all of the products I've tried from the brand, the body exfoliator is by far my favorite. It's such an interesting exfoliator because again, I was talking at the beginning of this video about the importance of chemical exfoliators and you can use those on your body as well. The interesting thing about this exfoliator is it combines glycolic acid, lactic acid, and salicylic acid. So AHAs and BHAs to chemically exfoliate, but then it also has super gentle physical exfoliation as well, which I personally would no longer use on my face, but the body is a little bit different from the face in terms of the skin, in terms of how they behave and what they can handle. So this uses pumice and bamboo charcoal as a really, really gentle exfoliant on top of those AHAs and BHAs. So you just get a super effective product. I use this like one to two times a week. And girl, when you use this and then the shower gel, and then you follow it up with the lotion, it is like, there's just nothing quite like it. And yeah, I hadn't hopped on the hype of this brand for a while, but I am so glad I'm there now. Let's switch things up. Let's talk about a kind of apparel item, an undergarment item or items. I talked about these in my chill morning routine. Um, and in the future, once I accumulate some more things from various brands, I would like to do a sustainable underwear slash lingerie kind of video, but it's an expensive area to accumulate products in, so that won't be for a while, but some of the first undies that I bought when I wanted to switch to more natural fibers were from Nikki brand. And I've heard mixed reviews on this brand in terms of longevity of the product because First and foremost, the brand itself is doing really, really great things. And I don't think anyone has an issue with that. Everything is ethically manufactured. Their whole thing is about removing like synthetic fabrics and harmful chemicals from undergarments that just like you don't need to be there. And they can often lead to just that area of our body not being able to breathe. And I think all of us know what it feels like to be, well, maybe not all of us, but many of us know what it feels like to be wearing like a polyester chiffon, polyester crepe top, and it's not breathable. You might start to smell. Basically, synthetic fibers like that just don't allow the body to breathe and they can become a breeding ground for bacteria. And you know that can cause your pits to stink if you're wearing it in a shirt. And it can lead to more severe issues if that's like what your underwear is made up out of. So that's not good. You don't want to be getting yeast infections and things like that. So really, I've just been trying to transition pretty much all of my underwear over to natural fibers. And organic cotton, again, in my personal opinion, seems to be the best fiber for that region. So yeah, Nikki has got certified uh, organic cotton undies. And I have a few pairs. I have these, which are like the briefs. Um, they're really, really nice to wear like under dresses and things like that. They're just like a high rise brief. And then my go-to of course as well, just with wearing a lot of high rise, super high rise <laughs> denim, um, it's just a classic thong. So as long as you hang these to dry after laundering them, I know some people have complained about the elastic deteriorating, but I've had these for a couple of months now, washed them several times and things seem to be going okay for me at least, but of course, Every situation is different. So um, there's lots of lots of great brands out there, Organic Basics, and then you've just got a whole other, you know, plethora of brands like that. So yeah, I'm beginning to resource that a little bit, hopefully can do a video about it maybe several months down the line. A couple beauty faves, really, this is like gonna be super short and sweet because I haven't been wearing a ton of makeup recently. And honestly, even once I return to like work in the traditional sense, like going to an actual office, I have just been loving like an 
even more minimal routine than I already had. Um, if you watch my everyday makeup routine on this channel, that was the makeup I was wearing a lot to work. Girl, it's like even less than that now, like three, four products, maybe five products top now is what I'm wearing every day. Um, but my favorite, favorite step has just been lip gloss. And for a long time, I didn't really like lip gloss. Um, actually, I remember talking about this Fenty Beauty gloss. This is just their classic gloss bomb in a like favorites and non-favorites video back in the day. And I was like, <laughs> It's just a lip gloss, it's not even good. It's so interesting, it's so funny, like how your opinions can change over time. And now I'm like, give me that sheer pink gloss. I want nothing else in this world than a sheer pink pretty gloss. And so I love this, just love the classic Glossier lip gloss. This is in the red shade. Um, so yeah, some days, well, most days, I'll just slap on one of these with just like some lip balm underneath and that is it. Today I am wearing Freckle Fiesta with um, the red Glossier lip gloss on top. So you can make it more like fun if you want to, but I absolutely love these on their own. Any lip gloss, guys, any lip gloss doesn't matter, but I just wanted to highlight lip gloss. Okay, so let's get into the weirdest, most miscellaneous favorite before I get into my music faves. She's a big one. It is this Lodge cast iron pan. Um, many of you know that I enjoy cooking. Even if I'm not the world's best cook, it's just something I really love to do. Um, as a vegetarian, I feel like there's a lot of creativity involved in it. And I feel like I share more of my random meals on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram if you wanna see more of that. But yes, I've had this cast iron skillet for probably like four years. But for the first two of those, I was like, terrified to use it. I was like, I would watch videos on like how to season your cast iron skillet on YouTube. And I was like, girl, it was such a daunting project that I did not want to take on. But foolish me, I did not realize that lodge pans come pre-seasoned and they're quite affordable. You can find them. Well, this one is a 12 inch skillet that you can find like for $30 sometimes as low as $20. And this is a lifetime investment. You will never, ever, ever have to buy another one of these. And how sustainable is that? You know, like that's pretty great. I've just been realizing that I've been holding on to some like nonstick things um, just from my early college days that I've had for like at the lowest three years, the top, like five to six years. And for nonstick, that is not good. You should replace a nonstick every like one to two years just because if you end up scratching the like surface, whether it's Teflon, whether it's like a green nonstick surface, doesn't matter how much you spent on that nonstick pan, doesn't matter if it's advertised as being safe, non-toxic, like there's just not enough years to have done the necessary research to back up the safety, the longevity of even those most clean nonstick pans. So I hope that makes sense. Basically with all of that said, I just wanna start transitioning my pans away from that. I think, you know, for any cook, it's important to maybe have one or two of those, but just buy them cheap, buy them from Ikea, replace them every one to two years and cool. But now I'm low key like, do I even need a nonstick pan? Because guys, I've cooked pancakes in this, I've made eggs in this, lots of things that are normally really sticky that you would probably wanna do in a nonstick, I've had no issues with just because, you know, once I got over my fear of using the pan <laughs> and was able to, you know, kind of oil it down after every use, you know, you don't use soap on it, all of those things. She is so well seasoned now that she's basically like a nonstick. And I think that's amazing. And I think that is such a great investment. I think that's just like a financially responsible decision to have a cast iron pan in your kitchen. And I've been transitioning my other things to stainless steel, but honestly, I just really feel like you cannot beat a cast iron. So that's been a favorite of mine for a while now. With that, I wanna get into some music favorites. Um, I've been listening to stuff for the past few weeks, months, whatever, and I just kind of want to talk about it. So the first song, well here, let me move out of the way. The first song I want to talk about is Fire by Waxahachie. I love Waxahachie. Basically, she's like an indie singer songwriter from Birmingham, Alabama. So it's like you get that kind of folky singer songwriter vibe and you almost get a little like country in there, which Yo, is like absolutely normally not my jam, but for some reason, every time this song in particular, Fire, comes on, like 
on the album, you can see she's like on the back of a Ford wearing like this prairie dress. Like I wanna be that. I wanna be wearing a long prairie dress out in a field somewhere, just belting this out or driving around with the windows down. That's typically the vibe I'm going for when I listen to this song. I just love this song. I think it's a great song to listen to as we're transitioning into summer. I also wanna highlight the song Burned Off by Wunderbar. Wunderbar is absolutely one of my all time favorite bands. Now they're in like top five for me. I saw them open for Joyce Manor, I think October of 2018. It was like the first year I had moved um, to Minneapolis and they're kind of just like go quirky, indie rock kind of sound and band. Their newest album, Either Light, came out um, near the beginning of this year and I had bought tickets to see their show. But of course, unfortunately it was canceled. So that's such a bummer, but that would have been the third time that I'd seen them anyway. So it's like not the end of the world, but I love these guys. This newest album has kind of a 80s vibe to it, which is fun. I know that's like the trendy thing that everyone's doing, but I, Mm, I eat that up. I love it. <laughs> We've got some Bombay Bicycle Club on here. They also released a new album this year. I love them. Eat, Sleep, Wake is chef's kiss. Like takes me back to the good old days of indie. <laughs> 1975 has released new music recently. If you're too shy, let me know. Oof, girl, I love this song, but I basically love everything by the 1975. Do You Mind by the Chain Gang of 1974. If you like the 1975, I think you will like the Chain Gang of 1974. He's basically just a more like shoegazy version, but still synthy 80s-ish kind of vibes like 1975. So yeah, been into him for years, like since early high school. Even the killers are really, really going for the 80s right now with Fire and Bone. So yeah, it's a very, very short um, little playlist. I'll have it linked down below on Spotify. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to curate it to like the best of the best that I've been listening to for the past like month, couple of months. So yes, let me know your thoughts on the things I talked about in today's video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.